This is uh, Khalid Muhammad, former national representative of uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam. Um, Mr. Muhammad is the man who made uh, so much, uh, so many of the front pages of America's newspapers with uh, a speech at Kane College, which so many people called anti-Semitic and anti uh, a lot of things, at the very least uh, racist. You remember the comment? He picked up uh, the Pope's dress, and let's see what's under that dress. Um, <laughs> Here's what you said uh, about Colin Ferguson, the man who shot a Jamaican, uh, African, bla a black male who shot six people on the Long Island train. Mr. Muhammad speaks. Where they set black inmates up in these jails and penitentiaries, and in particular there in Nassau County, and pulled all the black officers out and the in black inmates so they could jump on Brother Colin Ferguson because they were mad with him for catching the Long Island train and killing all them white folks. I love Colin Ferguson. I have no official position, so I can say I love him. You love a man who randomly killed six people on a commuter train? I love Colin Ferguson just as much as the masses of white Americans love General Schwarzkopf, right. General Westmoreland, General Patton, General MacArthur, and Eisenhower. America awards her killers and they get ribbons and stripes and bars. I'm sensitive to the pain and suffering of the loss of life on that train, but I'm one of the rebellious slaves. And so when black people stand up out of pain and suffering and frustration, I understand after 500 years. You also, uh, You talk about, uh, you talk about the uh, response of some uh, African Americans to, uh, for example, the book which uh, attempts to prove that the Jews are involved in the slave trade. I'd be happy to let them see that. Um, you talk about uh, when white folks can't defeat you, you said in your speech at Cain, They'll always find some Negro, some boot-licking, butt-licking, buck-dancing, bamboozle, half-baked, half-fried, sissified, punkified, pasteurized, homogenized nigger that they can trot out in front of you. I would ask you, Mr. Muhammad, is Jesse Jackson a boot-licking, homogenized nigger? To the best of his ability, I believe he tries every day to do that. Here you are, uh, here you are mocking uh, Jesse Jackson at a speech, uh, I believe this is Howard University. Roll the tape. Oh, boot-licking, buck-dancing, scratching, shuffling, messy Jesse Jackson. You keep, you keep. I am a somebody. I am a somebody. I keep hope alive. I am a somebody. I don't rightly know who the hell I am, but I am somebody. Yeah. Um, are you an entertainer or are you a committed person to? black people. I'm so glad you asked that question. I believe that the liberation and salvation of the black nation must be brought about by black people gaining a thorough knowledge of self after our 500 to 6,000 year holocaust where we have lost over 600 million. And so I believe that that education process must be a process of two steps. Inspiration and information. So I seriously give information, but black people are a people of rhythm and spirit, so I also give inspiration. From your speech at King College in 1960, 
Uh, Chief uh, Luthuli, the head of the ANC, received a Nobel Peace Prize, you reported to your audience, reminded them, for nonviolent struggle. Yeah. Just like Mandela just received it with F.W. de Klerk. How could you stand with your oppressor and your enemy and receive the Nobel Prize for nonviolent struggle? You have, uh, you do not uh, support then uh, Nelson Mandela's uh, strategy in the struggle to free black people in South Africa? Let us first of all for, uh, be very clear here, Phil. Nelson Mandela is my brother. So he is Jesse is a Jackson. member of the family, and so is Jesse, and Jesse is a very brilliant man. We just want him to return home and stop being used by the enemy and the oppressor against his people. Now back to Brother Nelson Mandela. And certainly we can never mention Nelson without mentioning Winnie Mandela. But Nelson Mandela's attempt at a multiracial government in South Africa after the murder of men, women, children, and babies and the rape of South Africa a criminal settler colony that has been established like Israel there in that part of the world. I cannot go along with one man, one vote. Let me say why. If someone broke into your home, Mr. Donahue, and actually bum rushed your home and black boots stomped your door down and came in and robbed and raped everyone in the household and was able to take the wealth of your home and parlay it into an empire. This is an invader, this is an intruder, this is a murderer, right. this is a burglar, this is a criminal. So I ha you have no responsibility to share your home with them after they broke in and committed the crimes that they did. You want, uh, you, you said about South Africa, we give him, that is to say white people, mm. 24 hours to get out, get out of town by sundown, that's all. If he won't get out of town by sundown, we'll kill every white that ain't right that's in sight in South Africa. We kill the women, we kill the children, we kill the babies, we kill the blind, we kill the cripple. We, we kill them all. We kill the faggot. We kill the lesbian. We kill them all. You say, why kill the babies in South Africa? Because they're going to grow up and oppress our babies, so we kill the babies. Are you seriously presenting yourself as a man interested in the future of your people with this kind of rhetoric? I'm just as interested in the freedom of my people as I am in the self-determination or the Kujichagulia, self-development, them being self-defining, self-respecting, and self-defending. If the white man has killed millions of our people, and you cannot deny right. the undeniable and indisputable and irrefutable truth, fact, proof, and history of their bloodshed there in South Africa. I said it would be merciful if they would leave. I don't agree with a government, a sham government. No man walks out of prison after 27 years and becomes the president unless there's a script and a plan behind the scene to remove the economic sanctions from whites in South Africa. But no real plan for redistribution of the wealth. The Oppenheimers, the De Beers and others, they're sucking the blood of our people. So I said be merciful. Give them a period of time. 24 Truman, hours. 24 Truman hours. gave the Japanese a period of time. But when they didn't comply, he dropped the bomb on men, women, children, yes. and babies. I make no apology for that statement. I believe that the invasion of South Africa was an act of unprovoked war. One nation against another nation. And nations must fight for the self-determination. They had no business there, Mr. Donahue. Yes. Would you like to see Aristide uh, return to Haiti to his rightful, uh, duly elected position as president? From what I have learned and studied of President Aristide, from what I can see in those I've been privileged to talk to who are close to him, he appears to be a very sincere man. He appears to be a man who really loves our people there and wants to see our people breathe free and correct the problems that colonialism and other disruptions is very definitely at the root of. However, I feel I do not want to see my beloved brother, President Aristide, returned to Haiti by the power of a Bill Clinton. Because if Bill Clinton can help to return him there, he will always attempt to be the puppeteer 
who will pull the strings and try to dictate to my brother how he should carry out the affairs of government there. Mm -hmm. Your comments see, appear to bespeak a, uh, uh, a position, in, a political position, in which you have no interest at all in reaching out and, uh, and hoping and working for a, commu a multiracial community of harmony and peace. Do I, am I correct in saying you have, fors you have forsaken that ideal? My arms are tired, Phil. <coughs> We've reached out for 500 years. Too late now. We've it? faced tanks. We faced water hoses and cattle prods. Vicious dogs bit the breast of black women off in those protest marches of the civil rights movement. Vicious four-legged dogs sicked on us by two-legged dogs. Bit into the groin and the private parts of black men, women, and children. So, Mr. Donahue, I believe that the white man is absolutely disagreeable to live with in peace and that no one has been able to get along with him nowhere on the face 196,940,000 square miles of the planet Earth. And so you will continue this uh, rhetoric. You will continue using... And action. And action. Uh, uh, action. Uh, what kind of action? Strategy to affect what in the United States of America? Let's start well, with us. No wise general sits with a representative of the opposition to discuss battle strategy and battle plans before the entire world. I don't think that would be wise. Mm -hmm. But the mission of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the mission of my spiritual father, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, whom I love very much and I want to be in that number when he takes a million black men to Washington, D.C. to call for reparations and justice. Their work is a work of liberation and salvation. Their work is a work to raise the mentally and spiritually dead black man and woman right. after we have been robbed of our names, our language, our religion, our culture, our God, our folkways, mores, and robbed of a power, yeah. the power of our own yeah. being. Lift up the Pope's skirt to see what's under there. This is high school stuff. Words well, like faggot. It, 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 it's, an, it's an immature sort of failure to really get out of the old Beavis butthead kind of uh, environment. Certainly you can't be proud of this kind of uh, language that you use. Well, if it is high school, then Faggot? the Bible, Faggot? listen for a second, the Bible speaks of lifting up the skirts of the gun. Oh, I'm surprised that you feel. It's a metaphor. It's symbolic language. I'm not at all interested in what is under the Pope's clothes. I'm not into that. <laughs> it's a metaphor. Let's Excuse see me. what's under there. Let's but see what's under there, But it is a metaphor there, to say, let us expose the Pope, according to H. Shelton Smith, President Emeritus of Duke University, in his book entitled, In His Image, quote, the Catholic Church and the Pope were directly involved in the institution of slavery. They financed slavery and gave the okay that it was good business to sell Africans. Lift up the skirts of his garment so that we can see the shame and reveal what has been hidden. But it has nothing to do with sexuality whatsoever. Well, uh, what, do you, what do you suspect has been hidden? I believe that... The, it has been and why would we want to lift up his skirt to discover what it might be? Well, we're saying lift up the skirt again. I don't believe you're missing what I'm saying. But lifting up the skirt again, as the scripture says, raising the skirts of the garment. I'll say it once more for you, and only once more, has to do with revealing the history, the hidden history. When you lift up someone's garments, then you show their shame. You show up their private parts, that which they normally hide from the rest of the world. I'm not dealing with organs under the garment. I'm dealing with the organ of slavery and those parts that have been kept private from the masses of the people. We are in New York City with Khalid Muhammad, and we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 
Here is uh, just one of the comments that uh, provoked the Anti-Defamation League to take out a full-page ad in the New York Times and other newspapers. Uh, what the ADL did essentially was publish in the New York Times some of the things that you said. Here's a part, this is an audio tape, of a part of your speech to Kane College last November that created such furor. Uh, Muhammad, uh, Khalid Muhammad speaking. The hook-nosed, bagel-eating, lox-eating, imposter, perpetrating a fraud, Johnny come lately, just crawled out of the caves and hills of Europe, wanna be you. Mm -hmm. um, not presuming you haven't been asked this before, but may I ask you kindly to speak to uh, the loved ones of um, Schwerner and Goodman? who died with one of your brothers, Cheney, buried in a shallow grave in the South in the middle of the Civil Rights Movement because this black man was seen with two white Jews down there causing trouble, trying to promote the civil liberties of your people. Two Jews found in a shallow grave. I happen to have met uh, the mother of one of these very brave people. And when, when she sees this, we can only speculate what must go on in her heart, you would want to say what to her? I don't have anything to say to you her. You just condemned yeah. all Jews with that observation, with no. this alliterative kind of uh, no, uh, I... Jew bashing that's, that so excites your largely male audiences. Well, I wonder why. It means that I speak the truth I speak to the pain and hurt of the masses of black people. Uh -huh. I speak that which many of them wish they could say. That's why they cheer yeah. and well, applaud. Speak to Mrs. Goodman, and I speak hey. that also, speak to which Mrs. many Goodman. of them only whisper behind closed doors. I think it is very arrogant to put this on the screen and for you and for others to attempt to tell me one of the Holocaust victims of the African Holocaust, displaced in the death and decadence of the diaspora of the Western world after having been robbed and raped and murdered, to tell me how to hurt. These are strong words that you put on the screen, but you cannot tell the aggrieved and the victim. As I was talking to Brother Malik Zulu Shabazz, the young student warrior from Howard University, and we were going over this, and we said, how do they expect to tell we who have suffered so much how we should speak. When you're hurt, you'll say faggot, you'll say cracker, but you don't want to give me time to say where these terms came from and how they apply to your people here in America. If it is true, if it is true that I don't want to give you time to explain the etymology of these words, it is also true that you apparently don't want to respond to my question regarding the loved ones of two Jews who lost their lives yes, to to stop the diaspora of the black people. I don't know. Do you have any? I don't know why they were there, and you don't know why they were there. But really? I must say this. So you're, you're wondering whether this. they were there for your people. I'm not wondering at all about them. What I'm concerned with the suffering and the pain of the masses of black people. No one wants to pay reparations. The Jews received over a hundred billion dollars in reparations and gets four billion annually. A Holocaust museum was set up for them on this soil for over two hundred million dollars and they get two, 21 million annually just for operating expenses. But the Catholic Church, the Pope, the Jews, the Arabs, white people in general, no one wants to pay reparations to these, the sons and daughters of Africa. So I speak to them. I don't speak I speak to them. I don't speak to the family of those two Jews. They are too, too many of us for me to speak to them. You don't want to take any time to make any particular We've given statement. all the time we've been in America. Now it's time we do something for ourselves. The we United are the same people, Phil, that when you beat us and rearrange our eyeballs in the socket, and rearrange our face and beat us and stomp us before the world. We're the same people that get up because God just made us with tender and sensitive hearts as his chosen people yeah. and say, well, can't we just get along? The United
The United States House of Representatives in an unprecedented action. I don't know whether there's a precedent for the U.S. House to take its time to debate and vote on the condemnation of a private citizen, but it has done that. 435 members of the House of Representatives debating the, uh, debating the condemnation of uh, Mr. Muhammad. Here, is two, uh, here are two members of the House on opposing sides. Uh, calling for the uh, censoring of Mr. Muhammad is Congressman Lantos, followed by Congressman Abercrombie, who, uh, Abercrombie, who makes a, a, a statement in behalf of free speech. Watch this, House of Representatives. On November 29, 1993, at Keene College in New Jersey, Mr. Khalid Muhammad, a senior representative of the Nation of Islam, delivered an outrageous and violent attack on the principles of racial, religious, and ethnic intolerance. His attempt to incite violence by preaching bigotry and hatred must be swiftly and forcefully condemned by this body. Governmental sanction against any speech, objectionable as it may be, is always suspect, is always suspect. The Constitution has proven to be our strongest safeguard against the Mohammeds of the world. Let us respect and revere the Constitution of the United States and vote down this resolution. Uh, Congressman Abercrombie's uh, position did not carry. The final vote uh, by the House of Representatives on the matter of condemning Mr. Muhammad was 361 yay, 34 nay. You have, sir been condemned by the United States House of Representatives, I assume you are flattered by that action. I, I believe that my ancestors, I believe that the blood that cries out from the grave of my ancestors who went to an untimely death at the hands of the white wicked slave traders, I believe that they cry out, their spirit is around me and their spirit emanates from me. And I believe that as a righteous man of God, but as a freedom fighter and a revolutionary, it is one of the greatest honors that could be paid. And we'll be back in just a moment. That's true. Yes, um, I have one question for the, the white audience that's watching this. A lot, of, a lot of times we're asked, they ask, what can they do? to help the situation and I feel that they should go over to their people and represent that uh, this issue the same way this brother um, puts his life on the line for us they should be doing the same thing because otherwise it's going to be a one-sided view they need to reach their people as well yes uh, what I'd like to know is what do they say to the KKK the skinheads the Nazis All white folks support the KKK. Well, enough of them do. <laughs> yeah. 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 Nobody says anything about, what? Uh, nobody disputes the facts or his, his facts. His facts are right and exact, and no scholar will debate Dr. Collard because right. Dr. Collard is right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I'm going to answer that lady's question not support KKK. But this gentleman up here. Yeah. Yes, my thing is, if, 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 if what he's saying is not true, let's bring somebody forward to prove him to be a liar. Muhammad, can you please tell me why it's blacks who are killing in, in Rwanda and other places, and can you please tell me why from Haiti, blacks from Haiti, are just risking their lives to come here to the United States of America? I'll tell you if I get a chance. Black people have been robbed, as I said earlier, of a knowledge of self. And when you rob people, sir, of a knowledge of self, 
then it means that they be they start to take on the characteristics and the nature of their oppressor and their colonizer and his mind by automatic systematic remote control rules in our people he gives them the guns and the weapons and the drugs and the alcohol the way you did our brothers the red man and the red woman brothers and sisters the way you did our latino brothers and sisters and then you pit one against the other and then say look at what these people are doing Yes. Adolf Hitler perpetrated the Holocaust. Uh, may I have your attention, please? Adolf Hitler perpetrated the Holocaust on 11 million people that died, 6 million of which were Jews, 5 million were others. Am I to understand that you would very much support his way of doing things and him for that matter? <laughs> Sir, this is not reverse racism nor discrimination that you could tie into your statement on Hitler. If the slave master is whipping the slave and blood is running down the slave's back and the slats incidentally where the term cracker comes from from the cracker man who was crack had the crack of the whip on the slave's back but if the slave takes the slave master's whip from him and starts whipping the slave master with his own whip that is not reverse racism that is not reverse discrimination that is the slave getting out from under the yoke of bondage and oppression i don't advocate what hitler has done before the world Hitler's struggle. I went to the Holocaust Memorial Museum and I tried to separate Hitler as a freak of nature from the rest of white people. But after all that we have gone through, I know that there's a little bit of Hitler in all white people and a lot of Hitler. In and we'll be back people. in just a moment. What you wanted to say? Yes. To the uh, Jewish brother up there, well, not brother, but the Jewish man. What about Goldstein, who slaughtered 39 Palestinians and became a Jewish hero? Publicly, rabbi said what about the fingernails? That Dr. Collins said that the rabbi said that the fingernail of one Jew was worth more than all of the Arabs in the world. And the New York Times ran the lead story with the photo showing the Jews fouling past his grave. Yes. They not only called him a hero, but a saint. Yes, may I make this point, Mr. Muhammad? The atrocity perpetrated by Goldstein was roundly and publicly condemned by the entire leadership of the Jewish community in America as well as the uh, leaders of uh, the state of Israel. Let me ask you this. They publicly condemned that action, and I can't even get you to look into the camera and convey the, even the remotest notion that you have in your heart some love for two Jews who died trying to save black people in the South. I speak of you Schwimmer and Goodman. You cannot get me to look into the camera and do that. Yeah. May, I ask, well, may I ask you to kindly speak to that? You cannot get me to look into the camera and show love for two Jews. I don't even know them. I live with this pain and suffering every day among my own people. Look at our babies there in the Oakland, in the Bay Area. They're watching Schindler's List. You have your Schindler's List, but for us it's been a swindler's list because someone is attempting to steal our birthright. They stopped the movie. Take our babies out of the movie as though it's such a moral outrage. And then Spielberg comes in. The governor comes in. What about the statements of the Jew, Howard Stern, the comedian, Jackie Mason? What about Moshe Dayan? What about the fact that members of the Senate have made racist comments and Congress and they were voting against me, but they were not brought up by their own colleagues in that so-called august body? Yes. Hello. What I'd like to point out is just as you said that you can't judge all black people by one person, you can't judge white people by just Hitler. What you have to realize is, is that we're in a diverse nation, which is America, and we have a lot to learn from everybody in this room. I feel I do. From all black people, all white people, and anyone else who happens to be in this room with me. America's the first Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Muhammad, could you please tell me, does Islam believe in Judaism and Christianity? And under Islam, 
Are Jews and Christians are people of the book? Do you believe that? And further, do you believe, sir, that one people and one book sent by the same one God? And you refer to the people up front that they are your brothers. Is it possible, Mohammed, Mr. Mohammed, that I am your brother also? And is it also possible that we are brothers truly responsible for each other? Is that possible? The Holy Quran says that the messenger of God believes in what has been revealed, and so do the believers. And I am a believer. In Islam, we believe in one God whose personal and proper name is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that one God, we believe, sent all the prophets and the great ones in the great line of divine, and we believe in all of the revealed scriptures. I don't know you, sir. I could feel that if you were attempting to live according to the law of God, then you might be my brother in the faith, but not my brother by nature. Right. Mr. Muhammad, Mr. Muhammad, are you aware, Mr. Muhammad, that the courts martial system on or about or in or about World War II condemned many black sailors for their involvement in handling munitions where many of them died as a result of their handling these munitions. Would you believe, Mr. Muhammad, that the Jewish war veterans that I'm proud to represent took this issue on and we have condemned the United States Navy as it relates to the deaths of these sailors and we have condemned them for their continuance dishonorable discharge of these black sailors. I ask you, Mr. Muhammad, what have you done on this specific issue? Well, it's kind of difficult to believe you on anything, but I would say this, that I do know that during that same war, that America was, as is today, so racist until the German officers, when they were captured, could eat in the same mess hall and have the same accommodations as the white American officers. But the black troops were segregated, couldn't come into that mess hall unless they were scrubbing the floors and washing dishes. So it was a white man honoring another white man, though one was American and one was German and they were supposed to be enemies, there was still a tie that was able to bind the two together. And we'll be back in just a moment. Yes. Yes. You want to show that? What is that? Is that a... Uh... It's a black man being burned alive with an audience like this cheering and applauding and tiptoeing to get in the picture. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, hi. Um... Yes. I'm representing Queens College, and everyone is talking about... Uh that we have as students is our history is not being taught in the textbooks right. and by me being a student and a citizen of America yes. I would like to know when is that time gonna come so you can learn about my history and understand my people we are not in your books yes. Sir. yes yes Phil I like to say that you know what he's saying is being backed up by Jewish scholars as well this is not only the information that Khalid has. Jewish scholars have the information. I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. He came to Fort Worth, Texas, where the police department is killing black men wholesale. Six black men have been killed in less than a year. But through his effort, there's been a change on the gang members' part in our community. So we appreciate Brother Khalid. Yeah. Yeah. This gentleman, this gentleman Yes. Yes, yes, sir. Being an educated college person, I see that you can always bring up events like this that where people have been killed in mass murders from all people. Let's learn off the past and not make high school comments like yours and put down Hitler-like manners and try to form peace and learn off the past and form the future. Sir, you wanted to say. Sir. Right here. Yes, sir. I, I like to see us lay to rest this whole notion of anti-Semitism. The one thing that is an incorrect, incorrect statement because the whole idea of a Semite, Semites were people who lived in southwestern Asia, including northeast Africa and the Arabian Peninsula, who spoke Ugaritic, who spoke Jees, who spoke Ethiopic, who spoke Hebrew, who, 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 who spoke right. Arabic. Right. Those are our people. Yeah. We are a Semitic people. Therefore, we cannot be anti-Semitic. Ashkenazic Jews are calling us anti-Semitic. We cannot be anti-Semitic because we are 
the descendants of a Semitic people. Let's lay that to rest. That was a weapon in the hands of the Jews since 1870. They used it against other people, but it doesn't work against Beautiful. people in Northeast Africa. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, I, 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 you I can't believe exactly what I'm hearing. We went to war in World War II to fight for the freedom of speech. We didn't fight for a freedom of speech of hatred. Many of our members, I'm a national commander of Jewish war veterans, and over 50,000 of our men died fighting for your right to free speech here now. I don't understand why you come out with such hatred. Phil, excuse me, Phil. Yes. Mr. Muhammad, sir. You, you make me sick to my stomach with that. Because well, at the same time that you were fighting, you were not no, fighting for the freedom and independence of black people. Soldiers, black soldiers in segregated companies lost their lives on foreign soil there but would have to come back and fight just to get a bite to eat and not have to go to the toilet on the side of the road somewhere in the bushes. So you're nothing but hypocrites and you won't pull that small time stuff over on me. <laughs> Yes, Why don't we talk about how the merchant Jews come into our black neighborhoods and they suck the life and the, and, and the money out of our neighborhoods and put it back into their neighborhoods? Yeah. Yeah. Briefly, sir. Briefly. First of all, I'd like to say peace to all the gods and earths and all the people that came here to, uh, to represent. Um, Brother Khaled is definitely uh, a true warrior in the cause of black struggle. Right. What I'd like to say as a young black youth is that I feel that America has sub sub subjected me to a holocaust. You understand? From, from all my ancestors all the way back to even right now, Rodney King, the brother Staten Island, mm -hmm. all we've been subject to is death and destruction here. And as far as Jewish people in the Bible, they say that you are the synagogue of Satan. And I'd like to what ask you people, why do you feel that you have cornered the market on sympathy? And why can't you feel the pain of the black holocaust? Why do you think that when we say the black holocaust that it's some blasphemous right. statement? I'd like for y'all to address that. Yes. Right. Beautiful. Right. First of all, sir. Yes, first of all, with regard to the last speaker, the NAACP was partially founded by Jews. But now I'll get to my question. Uh, all right, now let me, let, me, all right, let me just say, let me just say one final point. Eldridge Cleaver once said, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And I'd like to just end this show, hopefully, by some positive note and ask Khalid if perhaps he'd tell us what his real agenda is. Is it just to go out and try to talk about hating people, or are we going to try, are we going to have a race war, or are we going to have some, are we going to have cooperation? We're going to try to work together. Yes, thank you for the question. I'll give you an opportunity to answer that question when we come back in just a moment. Yes. you code. Pursuant to our agreement with uh, Khalid Muhammad, I'm pleased to uh, share this number f with you. This is the Black African Holocaust Council 800 number, 1-800-859-0170. I say again, this 800 number is 859-0170, the Black African Holocaust Council. The gentleman has a question of Mr. Muhammad. Um, are we going to preach hate? Are we going to have a race war? Where are we going and what would you like to do to uh, promote where you think we should go? We are taught by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to show courtesy, respect, and kindness, to be polite to all people as long as they are courteous, respectful, kind, and polite to us. But we must look at the fact that we don't teach hatred. Everywhere we go as black people, we face hatred. Look at it. Look at it. Angel food cake, white people say, is white. Devil's food cake, you say, is black. You wear white to weddings and black to funerals. Black ball, black male. You give us a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, pale-skinned, buttermilk complexion Jesus in contradiction to the black Jesus with nappy hair in the Bible. Our own babies, according to behavioral, sci behavioral scientists, our baby girls, when confronted when choosing, with choosing between a black doll and a white doll, there has been so much damage done, they choose the white doll and say the black doll is ugly. So racism is everywhere and it's institutionalized. We cannot really be racist because racism is prejudice plus power. Nothing I say up here nor anywhere in the world will impact and stop fronting. 
will impact on any white folks in this audience on your job, in politics, in economics, in housing, in the society. We don't have the power to do that, so we cannot be racist. You know what I'm saying? To, to this gentleman, I would like to say to this gentleman and all other people who are not blessed with melanin at this point in time, to understand that what has happened in our history is that you have been misinformed as much as we have been misinformed. Much of the information that is brought forth, not only from Dr. Muhammad, but other areas, other scholars, are not available to you, as a sister said, in your curriculums that you have for 400 years when you did not allow us to read and write and was being hidden. Whether you, sir, personally did that or not, it was was a legacy that was passed on to you. And I end by saying the Holocaust is simply the greatest atrocity on film. Ours was not film. I don't understand Islam. I am a Christian. May, may I have your attention, please? Certainly. But I am a Christian, and you mentioned Jesus. Let's go back historically and see what Jesus did. Jesus died for me, and he died for you. Jesus is a God that loves all men, and all men are created equal. I just wanted to answer the gentleman over his question. This young man wants to answer you. With respect to the race war, there will be a battle between black and white. And I fast and pray today that God, Allah, in his good time, remove all white folks from the planet Earth. And we'll be back in just a moment. Oh, uh, I feel the gentleman over there made a incorrect statement. That really was not necessary. That's all. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Seconds left. Seconds. Yes, ma'am. I just want to say yes, that my love and loyalty goes to Dr. Muhammad. Um, and sister over here is a little lost. She got the contact lenses in, you know. The fake lenses, but we won't go into that, you know. It's no news. All right. Um, my point is, um, there is... You know, we, we seem to be attacking issues that really have no relevance. This man making a statement that is factual, like brothers right. and sisters said. These are in the books written by Jewish scholars, That's right. not by him. He's just quoting, and we're attacking him. So, um, what's this? What's the name of this book, brother? Please. Yes. Secret relationship between blacks and Jews. Okay. Yes. I have time only to thank you all for your contribution to our discussion. Thank you for joining us. Join me in thanking all the speakers for their contribution. Services provided and promotional fees paid by the following.